Hello, everyone. My name is Joseph Smith. Hi, I'm Ashley. Hi, I'm Kimberlyn. Hello, I'm Kian. And today we want to talk to you about CRISPR-Cas9 myths and facts. So CRISPR-Cas9 is a thing I think a lot of people have heard of as a kind of a newer medical technology, maybe on the news, that has a lot of potential, but it's not what you're going to hear on the news all the time. I think there's a lot of misinformation about it. And we wanted to talk to you about what is, what is a reality for CRISPR-Cas9 and what isn't. And before we need to really get into CRISPR-Cas9 itself, we need to get into the systems that it's working with and make sure you really understand that how this is interacting with your cells. So first up, we're going to talk about DNA and RNA. Um, everyone knows DNA is kind of the, the blueprint print of a person and your, your cells. So Ashley, why don't you tell us a little bit about DNA? What, what is DNA specifically? Okay. Um, so DNA, as you said, is, is a blueprint for, for every cell that, that is in, in your body. Um, it is inherited from your parents. And this is a molecule that tells your cells how to make proteins and, and other things that it needs in order to function and live. Um, and, and DNA has a, has a structure where it has two strands and you can see the picture on the left of the screen that's being shared. And there is a strand on the left side and the right side. And in between those strands is bases and they, there's, they pair and there's one on the left, one on the right. And depending on the order of those, the cell will be able to determine what it needs to make. All right. So basically the DNA has these four letters that act as a code for the cell. And now the question then becomes, well, how does the cell do that? What, what is this? How does the cell use the, read the DNA and use the DNA to make things happen? So Keon, can you tell me can you tell me about RNA and how that is all connected? So RNA is made from DNA and what it does is it decodes DNA to make proteins and those proteins control what happens in the cell using okay. the bases. So your your DNA turns into RNA in the cell and then the RNA is used to make the proteins and the proteins are what actually do things in the cell. Well, there's also the question then, you know, cell needs a lot of proteins and in differing amounts. So how does a how does a cell decide I need this part of the DNA or this part of the DNA and this, to make the RNA? Uh, Kimberlyn, can you tell me how a cell is breaking that up? Well, cells and DNA are made of genes, which are, like I said, part of DNA, and they encode for specific proteins. So um, genes make proteins, or they also characterize traits. Okay, so a gene is just a subsection of DNA that is known to be responsible for something specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the system that you have in your body is the DNA in your cells, coded to RNA, and that's coded to proteins. There's subsections of your DNA called genes. Everybody got that? Let's get into now how we're going to start changing that. CRISPR-Cas9. So CRISPR-Cas9 is this big protein. It's got some RNA on it. But what what is this? Where, where did we, we find CRISPR-Cas9? What's the origin of this? Did we make this in a lab? Ashley, where does CRISPR-Cas9 come from? CRISPR-Cas9 was originally found in E. coli which is a type of bacteria. Um, and, and this was um, determined to be a immune system for bacteria against viruses and other invaders that are going to try to take over it. All right, so it comes from a bacteria. Sounds a little fishy, but sure. So 
then how does exactly does CRISPR Cas9, if it's something from a bacteria, how does this get how does this affect people? Keon, how does CRISPR Cas9 affect people exactly? How does it get into your cells and whatnot? So what CRISPR is is a piece of RNA that controls the Cas protein. And so what it does is it uses an RNA called guide RNA that finds the DNA it's looking for and at that sequence of DNA, um, Cas cuts the DNA and leaves it open for a protein to connect. Okay, so the Cas9 goes in and cuts up someone's DNA. All right. Now, the thing about that is we just talked about the fact that your cell uses DNA and genes in order to stay alive. So what is, what is the benefit of putting Cas9 into someone and cutting up their genes that they need to live. Kimberlin, how, how is cutting up some poor sap's genes going to help them? Um, well, not all genes are healthy. Certain mutations can cause diseases or altercations in the protein synthesis that could cause disease and symptoms that are painful. And by cutting them out, we could alleviate those symptoms or the disease. So you're saying that Sometimes your genes aren't exactly good. People can inherit bad genes that can cause illnesses. And that what CRISPR-Cas can do can go in and cut up those genes, basically. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, okay. So then it cuts people's genes and we can then helpfully put in a new gene. Can we put, so how, how does CRISPR-Cas9 get into a cell like if you just injected this into someone's bloodstream surely it would not really work right Ashley how is how do we take a CRISPR Cas9 and get it where we need it to go in a body so CRISPR Cas9 can be put into cells through what's called a vector which is essentially it's like a box when you're when you're wanting to ship something you put it in a box and then ship it so a lot of times we use viruses uh, to we put the cat crispr cas9 into the virus and the virus then allows that to be transported into a targeted cell it's not a virus so that's not going to make it so you could infect someone else with crispr cas9 right no no, you're because we're taking out the the insides of the virus and putting in what we want, the virus loses its ability to spread and be infectious. Okay. So what we do is we take the CRISPR Cas9 and we put it in a little fake virus, and then that virus will only infect the cells we really want it to infect. So let's say you got a lung problem. It's only going to really infect your lung cells. That's kind of the idea, but how can we, what, what diseases really are we going to treat with this? Like, what is a, an example of a disease that we could take this viral vector Cas9 and put it into someone's bloodstream or whatever and, and actually, like, treat them? Keon, what is a disease that you think we could treat with CRISPR-Cas9 today? So one of the most common disease that probably would work for this is sickle cell anemia where a bad gene makes red, red blood cells shaped wrong so what CRISPR would do is uh, cut out the bad gene and put in a healthy gene okay so we'll have a healthy gene in here too correct and then together that'll fix something well that just yeah. sounds great I mean why are we not going ahead and going to everyone with sickle cell anemia and injecting them with CRISPR-Cas9 to fix them. They'd be completely cured. Kimberlin, why aren't we just curing people with CRISPR-Cas9 right now? Well, CRISPR-Cas9 doesn't have the ability to correct multiple genes at one time. It could target specific areas, but complicated diseases such as cancer have multiple locations where mutations have occurred. Okay, so it's not... It's not really good for every disease. It's really, it's good for certain ones right now because it, because of how it works. Yes. 
All right, so you can change one gene. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, at least the changing that one gene is going to be perfectly accurate, right? It's going to go in there like a laser and always work. Ashley, isn't that right? It's going to always target exactly what you want? No, un unfortunately, that's that's not the case. Um, with with CRISPR-Cas9, the any sequence that matches the guide RNA close enough is is going to cause Cas9 to cut that part of the DNA. So that that identified piece may not necessarily be exactly the place we want to cut. Um, and so that results in in what's called off target sites where we're we're cutting where we don't exactly want to cut. So if something is similar enough, maybe two genes are quite alike, you could get, you know, this off target where you're cutting the wrong thing. That'd be really bad for for you. Yeah, it, it can potentially be be harmful. All right. Well, I mean, that's to be expected. You're going to have problems with the, the first thing that, you know, was for gene editing, right? This is the first technology we've ever had to edit someone's genome. Keon, is this the first thing that we've ever used for this? No, actually, the first thing we used was uh, viral vectors. And um, before Cas9, there was actually a guy who was injected too much with viral vectors and ended up dying due to complications. Oh, so it was actually, this isn't the first one, and this one was, mu and those were much worse in the, in the beginning. Correct. All right. <laughs> Well, at least we've made a lot of progress. I mean, progress will continue, right? Eventually, you know, this technology is going to get no good enough. We're going to be using it all the time. I mean, people are going to be making like designer babies and stuff, right? Kimberlyn, are, are we just going to have like rampant human gene editing with this pretty soon? Unfortunately, it is heavily regulated in many countries and banned in some. Um, it's unethical because we don't understand the implications it could have on future generations. And we don't have consent to be modifying genes. So it's not really allowed then? No. All right. Well, sure. I mean, it's not allowed right now, maybe later, but eventually, I mean, once people get injected for this for diseases, though, that's going to pass down, right? I mean, you change someone's genes, you change their kids' genes too, right? Actually, isn't it true that, you know, whatever, however you use this on someone is going to change their kids' genes anyway? No, there, there are two different types of, of major groups of gene editing. And, and the ones that would be passed down are edits that are made to uh, sperm and egg cells. And the types of editing that are not going to be passed down will be edits that are made to cells like your liver and kidney that, that are your, your body cells. And, and those types of edits are to what's called somatic cells. Okay. So if that viral vector doesn't hit someone's eggs or sperm cells, then their kids aren't going to be affected, even if it did hit, say, their lungs. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. So you can't, you can't really, you can't, it's not going to be passed down. It doesn't really work for certain things, but you know, it's not, it's not, it's not going to make people sick, but you know, it doesn't, you don't need to be using human DNA in these things. Right. I mean, you could use like animal DNA. What what's to stop someone from just putting a bunch of dog DNA in another person, changing them, you know, making them grow paws or whatever? Keon, can, couldn't you just put a bunch of dog DNA in this and like change someone to an animal? Uh, no, you could not, because uh, CRISPR Cas9 only affects one gene, and you would have to do it to so many genes before something like that had an outcome. And even if you could, uh, the genes probably wouldn't accept the changes. So it's, it's not really viable to be doing that to someone like that, to be altering all those genes to change someone into something else. Correct. All right. Well, maybe you can't use it on people, but what about like a closely related ancestor? Like what if you had some dinosaur DNA and you could turn a lizard into a Tyrannosaurus? I mean, they're pretty close, right? Kimberlyn, couldn't you just use this to bring back dinosaurs so you could just edit all those genes from dinosaur dna into something as as much as i would like to see the dinosaurs again it is unlikely because the dna has been not living for the longest time and we could change it in pre-existing creatures related but you can't make enough edits to 
bring back the dinosaurs. Okay. So you can't really do that. But but there are practical uses for this. I mean, what about cancer? Everyone's pretty unhappy about cancer pretty much all of the time. I'd say that there are some genes in cancer that we know of, like the, the breast cancer gene, right? Ashley, couldn't we use this to remove the breast cancer gene from people? And at this point, no, we, we can't. Um, and, and with breast cancer as an example, there's more than one gene that can lead to breast cancer. So we, we'd have to make multiple edits and, and we'd have to have different variations of the guide in order, the guide RNA in order to do that. Um, in addition to the fact of cancers are hard to treat in the first place because it, within one tumor, there is a whole bunch of different variations in the cell. So they're not all the same, which, which creates even more barriers to, to treating this through gene therapy. All right. So basically what we're trying to say with all this is that while CRISPR-Cas9 is an incredible technology and it's going to allow a lot of things, it is not a panacea. This is not going to cure all cancer. This isn't going to cause a spring of gene editing to suddenly happen because we've had technology before this for gene editing. It just wasn't as good. But that's pretty much the case. And if you don't believe us, here it is from the horse's mouth. These people are incredibly intelligent and have written some incredibly good papers about gene editing. The reality of this is the new technology is going to be there, but it's going to take some time. Anyway, I would think I would like to thank everyone for listening, and I hope that you learned something from all this. Make sure you go out there a little bit more informed. Thank you for your time.